me show you the difference between a grand piano and an upright piano, other than just the obvious appearance of it. The big difference is in the action. In a grand piano, you're working with gravity. The key gets pressed down, the hammer goes up. That the key is only traveling three eighths of an inch in the front. Your key is your finger is pushing it three eighths of an inch. The hammer is traveling one and seven eighths. So the hammer is going much faster than you can possibly do here. So that is in essence what a grand piano does. It gives you kind of the advantage of feeling the key, the weight of the hammer at all times. So it gives you a, a very exact sense of control. And even the damper, which comes up and down on top of the string, is helped by gravity. Now let me pull over this little upright action. I'm going to pull it here toward me. Um, same amount of travel in the front of the key. You're still pressing about three eighths of an inch down. And the hammer is also going about the same amount, one and three quarters of an inch, one and seven eighths of an inch from rest to striking the string. But you have to convert this motion to this motion, to a horizontal motion. So it's a very different physical challenge to come up with the upright action. We have to have more uh, uh, help from springs because we don't have gravity to work with as much. So we have a hammer return spring over here to help push the hammer back. We also have a spring for the damper. Now the upright action and the grand action have many similar components. You have a whipping, you have a jack, you have the hammer butt. Over here we would call it the hammer shank and flange and knuckle. And you have of course the hammer. And the hammer shaped a little different in the back the front is about the same thing, about the same weight. Okay, hey, since I'm showing you these models, let me bring out this wonderful thing that I got from Mason and Hamlin years ago, which demonstrates the, uh, the essential ingredient in any piano, which is the crown of the soundboard. And we demonstrate it by striking this tuning fork, which simulates the strings. And then we put the crown in. And you can hear it sustain, it's full, it's singing. If it goes away, it goes away, but you can hear it even now. So one more time, it's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching this uh, with me today uh, with these models that have been so, uh, so helpful in my life. It's fun to share them with you.